naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit What's back up, and relax guys? and enjoy the show. Here. Episode 182. 182. So I wanted to just kind of start off today and just give thanks to uh, everybody who's in my life. Give thanks to my friends, my family, you know, my children, my spouse, and and the people who are close to me, thanking them. I know I always thank the ancestors and I give thanks to them as, as we should be thankful to the people who came before us. But I also want to thank the living, the people who are here right now with us, who who give a lot to us, who help us through this process. Um, people who have been in my life who made a big difference, so... The story, you know, that they share about their lives with me and me sharing with them is very crucial, very important. So I want to give thanks to all, all those who have come through my door, walked out my door, come into my life, out of my life, into my life, stayed in my life, here for a moment, here for a moment in time. Thank you to everybody because everybody had a reason, had a purpose, as I have a reason and purpose in other people's lives, even if it's for a short moment. So in that, I want to give gratitude and thanks to all those who are presently in my life and contributing in positive and magical ways. And those who uh, have left and walked out of my life as well, I ask that, you know, the Great Spirit protect them on their journeys as they discover and rediscover themselves in this process. So we send our prayers up high and we give thanks. So a live show, I have, this is almost the end of the month and I kind of put it off just because, man, there's just been a lot going on. I've been busy with drumming, been busy with clients, been busy with projects and collaborations and stuff, which is good. I'm pretty, pretty stoked about that. I'm pretty excited. Um, you can find most of my stuff on egarcia.com. Click the event button and you can see all this, the magical, wonderful drummings and sound baths and sweat lodges and all classes and things that I teach. Kind of funny, I have to book all those things a year in advance. A lot of people don't realize the depth of how much happens in my life. I would love to go to a lot of other events that other people put on, but I'm so busy with my own personal events. I have to make time. And that's on me to work through that process as I continue to progress in this journey that we call life. But I'm here also to talk a little bit about what our topic is today. Are you the black sheep or are you the white sheep? Okay, so let's distinguish the difference. The black sheep is usually the persons or persons who, and it's sheep, not sheeps, who consider themselves a little bit outside the fringe of their families or friends or who are considered a little bit different, a little bit radical. Now, the white sheeps are kind of the people who fall into the category of normalcy, people who like to just make their life to be a certain way, uh, like a little guidance, a little direction, and they don't really like to rock the boat a little bit. <clears throat> They're kind of like the followers, per se. But the white sheeps also are people who are extremely on the polarized side of the light. People who are completely polarized from the shadows who have nothing, want nothing to do with negativity or nothing to do with shadow work or anything like that. But I'm here, I'm here to share with you that we have shadow sides and we have light sides to our, our so-called sheep life in the world that we live in as human beings, as we progress. It's, you can either stay too long in the dark and too long in the light because you will find yourselves consumed by one or the other. Now, the beautiful thing is to come into the middle and find that common, kind of like a magnetic, you know, when two magnets meet that don't necessarily touch or they do touch, depending on the polarities of them, north and south, south, east, you know, east, west, all the different polarities that we try to turn the magnet around and try to, to hit. And sometimes when we turn it the opposite way, we hit north and south, hit, boom. And then when we they're the opposite, they kind of repel a little bit. And that's kind of the energy I'm talking about. I think that's kind of a good energy to be at, kind of the repelling. I see you, I recognize you energy where, you know, you are not consumed, but you're almost touching, but you're not touching because there are some differences that keep us away. And for a lot of people, that's a lot of us. Now, sometimes we have folks that we meet and boom, we're right there and <laughs> they're with us forever. But for a lot of people, a lot of people come into our lives like this. You know, they're the, they're the, the, the white and the, 
in the light, in the shadow sides. So I posted earlier today a little bit about black sheep or black sheep, as my wife would say. The black sheep is the person who feels like they're the rebel, they're rebellious, and they're the ones that they're different than everybody else. No one understands me. I'm different, you know. I'm made different. But, you know, quite frankly, you're not as different as you think. You know, there's a lot of us out there who are considered black sheep. As much as we can fall into categories of the black sheep, and we can fall in categories of being white sheep. Because we ebb and flow. That's, that's life. Eb life is about ebb and flow. And that's what the two magnets repelling, but not, not touching, but almost keeping each other apart. Almost like levitation. That's that's true essence of life. When you can be, you're able to separate away and then come back and flow, and just enough where you don't give yourself away. But you're both from the opposite poles, but you at least meet in that place where you can you try to push. Now a lot of us, it's very easy to walk through life and move through life, being told what to do, you know, being shown the path, shown the way. But, you know, in essence, we're all white sheep in some category or another. We're all white sheep in the sense of, like, for example, we have to shop. We are the sheep. We are led to buy, you know, and consume. Consumerism is being the white sheep. Now, you could be the black sheep and grow your stuff at home, but there are some things you just, you just can't do. You know, there are people who are extremely off the grid and they can handle it, but it's a very small group of people, very small. But the majority of us, me included, you know, we, we depend on the natural resources that are pumped from the ground to heat our homes, to cool our homes, to light our, our light bulbs, you know, to fuel our cars, because that's what it is. That's life. And no matter what kind of system you use, even if you have electric cars, Something has to be stripped from Mother Earth. Something has to be taken from the Earth in order for it to be consumed and to be used. And I think that's what a lot of people forget sometimes. That even if we change the more sustainable energies, there are some things that we have to do in order to create those sustainable energies. These batteries we create for electric cars, these batteries for our phones and all these things, these, these all have to be mined from Mother Earth. The cobalt that's used in our phones has to be mined from Mother Earth. And, you know, the systems that we create, you know, even when we use wind, solar, you know, water, energy, which we do. Hoover Dam is a good example. They use the turbines to generate electricity when the water flows down, down the dam when it, exp when it expels the water to, to turn those turbines. It's not like we don't use it. It's there. We do use it. But sometimes we don't see it because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Like in Spain, they have these huge, 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 huge open fields of solar panels that, that run cities, that's, that power cities. Now, here in the United States, we have those possibilities, we have those opportunities, but we're so entrenched and we're so locked in our, our minds about that we have to have fossil fuels. And our, our dependency of fossil fuels is very powerful. And it's not like we can just shut down the fossil fuels and stop using gas and that's it. There's a lot of what ifs, even if we get into, you know, using electric cars, you know, if we use electric cars, how fast can we charge a battery? How fast does it take? Is it quick? Is it fast? How much does it last? You know, in some cases I've heard people's the electric cars catch on fire. True or not true? I don't know. What causes catch on fire? I don't know the research enough. It's just like cars. They explode too. If they get hit in the right place, right? So things do happen. So how does how do we how are we black sheep in in our own worlds in our own societies? A lot of being a black sheep in our own communities in our world is trying to stand out from the norm, trying to stand out from what is perceived to be normal, what is perceived to be the way. But for a lot of us, you know, when we start to do this kind of thing, we attract other people who are like us. Like-minded energies attract. So sometimes we find people who are similar to our belief system very close to our belief systems and they and they resonate with us. Now, it doesn't mean they resonate 100%, but they resonate with what we're doing to some degree. Now, for a lot of us, it, it's not that easy. It's not that easy to break away and to be considered, um, you know, different because we're not always different. You know, when you think about it, when you start to, when you really start to think about it, you know, 
we're all kind of wear the similar clothes. We wear similar jeans. We buy similar shoes. So there's like a fabrication of system that uh, kind of uh, indoctrinates us to buy certain things. Teenagers are probably the worst. They all want to wear the same clothes. They all want to look alike. Yet they all want to be independent and different. Yet they can't be because, you know, the only reason why is because they're trying to, just like us, they were just rebellious and they're trying to be different. I get it. When I was growing up, we had holes in our jeans, remember? And we sometimes were just white t-shirt and that was it, you know? It depends what generation and where you come from and how you see and perceive it. So when you belong to a family of black sheep, like I do, everybody thinks that their drama story is a little bit more prolific than yours or that you they suffered a little bit more. And so they, they're ostracized and pushed out because, you know, but, you know, a lot of times we push ourselves out of norms and out of situations that don't fit our needs, that don't fit who we are as humans. You know, right now we're going through through a change in the world where we have a lot of people uh, self-identifying and trying to find their ways through uh, to, you know, new labelings of with pronouns, uh, new trying to figure out who they are as a, a man or a woman. We're going through all these different shifts and changes. And for society, that can be very painful. Now, what happens and where we go from here? I don't know. Society will decide what's best for society, regardless even if the small minority feels that they're being ostracized and that they're the black sheep, that they feel like they're being, you know, shunned from society. But society has done this for eons. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. And society will keep doing this because that's what societies do. They try to keep the constructs in a certain way so these constructs aren't violated in their perceptions of violation, meaning um, things that are comfortable to them. You know, cryptocurrency is a good example. You know, I remember when I remember when cryptocurrency was like the big talk of the town. Oh, everyone's, oh yeah, you got to get crypto. You got to get Bitcoin. You got to get... You know, Celium, you have to get a uh, Dogecoin, blah, blah, blah. But now FTX, remember FTX, that, that new systems. But when you find out that these systems are, are made because we have to entrust and believe that they work. If we don't believe that they work, then they won't work. So these systems collapse and they fall because of humanity's decision to agree if these products are going to be good for us or not. So when these systems break down, FTX file, files for bankruptcy, bankruptcy and the government takes over and you have all these other uh, companies that have crashed and burned because they haven't built the trust and the relationship with the hum humans, with other humans. And then what happens is when you steal from somebody, it's hard to build trust with somebody who, you know, believes that their system works. And, you know, when I remember when Bitcoin was like ridiculously expensive, you know, you, one one Bitcoin costs so much money. But, you know, these systems only exist because we allow them to exist. And I guess my point where I'm trying to get at is the system of the black sheep or white sheep exists because we allow it to exist. How do we change that? How do we work that? How do we manifest that, recreate that? How do we make that something that benefits us? Well, the thing is we have to work through the system. We have to work through this, through this process. If we don't work through this process, then what happens is the processes is worked for us. When we don't speak up or we don't, and we're silent sometimes, there are other people who would take our silence as either defiance or that we agree because we, they don't have an answer from us. For those of us who don't communicate or are not expressing the feelings and emotions about things that are happening, it doesn't mean that you're not participating. It's just that people are perceiving what you're saying or not saying to be a certain way. So right now when we move through life, you know, we find that a lot of people are being alienated because of their belief systems or because they believe things differently. Now, the world sees the world how the world wants to perceive the world. We will all see the things how we want to see them. The world is not black and white. The world is very gray. There's very gray areas. You know, our brain doesn't fully develop until we're like 25 and 26. That's what scientifically, if you're into science, that's usually what they say. So that means that a lot of things that, we, that we're learning from youth are the programmings from our parents, from our friends, from our people that we've met. And then when we get to 20, we're impressionable. If we go to college or we go to trade schools, we're impressionable by the people teaching us. So their belief systems um, are indoctrinated into our, our 
core computer system, which is our mind, our spirit, and our soul. And so here we go. We have all these youth, and they're and they're on, and they're working through. So I think what happens is the influences and the people that we have around us. This is very super important as well, as much as the people that come into in a moment in time. So the people that come into your life for a short period of time or a long period of time have a very big role, very big play on how you develop as another human being because they will indoctrinate belief systems that they have. You will share with them uh, belief systems that you have. And the thing is, where where's the fine line? Where is that place where you guys can meet in the middle? Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. And But yet we still leave with a peace in part and we still leave with a message that people like to share. So is there anything wrong with being a sheep or sheep or whatever you call them or a white sheep? Not necessarily. Not if you don't know any better than you just move along and you, you do whatever you do and your life is comfortable and you're happy. Your trash is picked up. Your lights are on. You pay your bills and that's good. Even the system may not even collapse. It may collapse. You will still find a way to navigate waters like that. Now, people who are outside those norms and people who like to you know, move the system are very beneficial to our growth because they push the gamut. They push, they push the system to look at itself. Are we avoiding something? Are we looking over something? Or is this person just crazy? You know, what's going on in their mind? But this is, these are the things we have to work through. These are the processes that we have to follow through and become part of because as human beings, you know, we don't see each other necessarily as equals. We see each other as humans who are participating in life. Equality is something that's been ingrained. It's something that's been brought into our society that all men and women are created equal. But that is a statement of equality in the sense of we all have a chance to do whatever we need to do. Physically, there are other human beings who are much more stronger, faster, and, and much more intelligent than myself as I am, you know, as I um, might be more intelligent than some other human beings, depending. But, you know, it depends how you put that and where you put that scale. You know, where's that sliding scale? But equal equality, no. I can say I fall short <laughs> with a lot of things. You know, and I do my very best to be the best version of myself because that's all I can do. That's all I can give to my friends, to my family, to society, how I contribute, you know, in different ways, in different places, you know. But... The thing is, sometimes we get, we get stuck in these in these uh, these dialogues where we believe things have to be a certain way, and the loudest the, the loudest ones will always cry. They will cry because they're they're hurting their wants and they need. Those who have been served, those who are being served, and those who are comfortable will usually not cry. So, how do we move through society? How do we navigate through this world? Well, we have to listen. Doesn't mean we have to agree, but we have to listen at least and say, okay, fine. And, you know, this is why we have a democratic system, per se. You know, we vote on it. We agree to it. It works. It doesn't work. And, you know, no matter what you do, there's always going to be somebody who's upset, someone who's angry. And some there's always going to be people who be, you know, be statically happy that things worked out a certain way. Because that's just how it is. That's, unfortunately, that's the system we live in. You know, there, you know there's, there's separation in that, in those ways, in those categories. Now, I'm not saying we have to be mean or upset or mad at other people because they think different than us. But a lot of people don't sometimes listen to people. They don't give people the chance to express their feelings and emotions. I see this a lot in the work that I do. I see this, you know, with the interactions I have with people. I've also participated in ways where maybe I should have thought about it before I did it, you know. But but these this is how we learn because this is what humans do. We learn. We learn from our mistakes, hopefully. Now, the question is, do we enable that behavior to challenge us or, or does that behavior mold us, you know, or fix us in a certain way? It's really up to us. We, you know, we're constantly making choices and decisions all the time, how we want to navigate life and where we want to be with life. Life is not granted to us. Life is, is a very, very special, very nourishing thing that we have to continually build and continually, you know, uh, foster and help grow through love and joy and happiness as we take deep breaths every moment you know being grateful for those breaths i remember when i didn't have i couldn't breathe you know because of my lung and my uh, covid pneumonia and how scary that was 
just for the little things that life, that our body supports us. Now, as humans, you know, it's okay to fall short. It's okay as long as we're not bringing people down and taking people down with us. You know, if we all fall together, then that's one thing. But if we fall alone and we want to bring people down because we're angry, upset, that doesn't work. That's not good. It's good to learn and to come back and become stronger and better. You know, as we progress as a nation, as we progress as a country, as we progress as a world, as we progress as an economy, as we progress throughout, you know, all this global economic, political system that is just developing in in encasing us and forcing us to live a certain way we have to find peace we have to find joy we have to find these little gaps and you know this is why i do drumming sound baths my shaman classes reconnection to earth my shaman hikes all these things just to help people reconnect back to things i mean it's real easy to go and do it yourself but there's something about when you go with somebody and you get to see these wonders in front of you I look out my, my wind. I'm outside today doing my show. I see these trees. You know, I see these sentient beings standing here in front of me. I see the grass. You know, I, I see the birds. I see the hawk and the falcons flying by. I see the squirrels. You know, I see this little river rat who travels up and down our, our neighborhood. Decimating people's gardens. <laughs> you know, and not even the countless insects that are floating around. And the countless things that, are, that aren't seen and unseen. You know, they all have their purpose. Yesterday, I watched a crow decimate a nest and take, the crows took the baby chickies and they became supper, unfortunately. You know, there's nothing I can do. That was just like, I felt hopeless. I was like, whoa, there's nothing I can do in this particular case. Because there's there's a there's a system, there's an order to nature. There's a, way, there's a thing that, you know, that life has indoctrinated and teaches and cycles and does because <coughs> they're very much in the moment animals are very much in the moment they do they do their things now <coughs> versus <coughs> excuse me versus later you know pardon me got chucked up there got thinking about the little bird but i can't i can't damn the crow for doing because he's he or she is doing something that's the natural instinct something that's very natural to them something that they're, they're just designed to do you know the lions will eat the weakest in the in the herd to keep the herd strong keep the herd strong <clears throat> so when you look at humanity what's the thing that kept us in check what's the thing that kept us you know from creating a, a society that was stronger or weaker well with our advancements there are several things that have happened some of us, if we didn't have the advancements and we didn't have the, 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 the medicines and stuff, a lot of us wouldn't be alive today. A lot of us, if we were born in the 1500, 1400, 1300s, or 10,000 years ago, you know, a lot of us wouldn't have been here. Or our lineage wouldn't have carried through because there's a natural selection, natural order to things. Has humanity corrupted that and changed that? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it advanced it. Maybe our advancement as humans to save more humans <clears throat> is either our detriment or, or something that gives us hope for the future. But when I look at it, I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I wasn't here, I wouldn't really have been missed because my contributions would never have happened. Now, there are people on this planet, there are people in this world who contribute to a higher higher vibration and there are the ones who contribute in a lower vibration but regardless we're contributing something a different vibration vibrational energy and so you know i think about that sometimes i'm going wow you know as a black sheep am i contributing you know being the rebel being the person who i'm not necessarily calling myself the black sheep other people call me the black sheep but you know and sometimes we fall into the category where we have to live up to that name or to that nick sheep but, you know, it, it is what it is. We, we, we struggle to find our ways and we struggle to find our paths. But it's funny how, you know, when I have a lot of, I have siblings and they have their own lives. And I'll never forget my dad I said, Dad, I try to get all these guys together, try to get everybody to, 
you know, be, you know, let's do something. And my dad just says, you know, you just got to let them be. You just got to let them be where they are at. He goes, you know what? He thought they, they love you. They care about you, but they are living their own lives. But they are where they need to be. It's not that they don't love you. They just have their own families. They have their own issues. They have their own problems. They have the whole set of whatever they've created, whatever's being created, whatever will be created. It has nothing to do with you. It's more about them, how they perceive the world through their personal eyes. Just like you and me. We see the world how we see it through our rose-colored glasses. Not how other people. Even, you know, if we saw something, uh, an accident, we see it how we, pro how we are programmed to perceive something. How we are programmed to digest something and then regurgitate it out and share with the world. So it's kind of funny how that works. But life is very very simple very easy but it's also very complicated in a very you know unique dance i'm here to tell you black or white sheep it don't matter the thing is to know is this you know every day we are given an opportunity to share to do something better we can either stifle it with anger and frustration and project onto other people our feelings and emotions get stuck in our traumas, get stuck in our stories, and rewrite our, keep rewriting our stories to a point we, we that's all we can think about is our stories and we rewrite. We don't even know where how it even began or how it's going to end because we keep rewriting it. Or we can be like the deer, we can be like the birds, we can be like the bee. Their purpose is right in the moment, right now. What are we going to do today in order to succeed and to work forward and to move forward? You know, the other day I, I learned that a dog one day one day in a dog's life is one week. And that kind of floored me. That was like, whew. I was like, I said, that's, that's heavy. You know, seven days for us is a week. You know, so for a dog, one day is a week. That means no wonder they have unconditional love. No wonder they want to lick your face. No wonder they want you to hug them because their time is limited. They will live only what, eight to 10 years. 14, 15, if you're lucky. And how they experience the world is much different than how we experience the world. Could you imagine if one day of your life was one week? That would mean that that's the longest day. Every day is the longest day. Like your, your, your sleep would probably be the most relief you would get. And you're waiting and waiting. And you know how dogs wait. And cats probably do this too, but dogs wait around, you know, all day long waiting for you to get home to share with you their week, not their day. They're there to share your week. You know, so that's very powerful. You know, when you think about it, how a dog, you know, loves its owners, loves the people around it, loves other dogs, you know, how it shows unconditional love. Can we show unconditional love? To an extent, yes. We have unconditional love moments where we can share unconditional love with others. But we are so full and sometimes our egos indoctrinate why we should feel a certain way. Now, our egos are very vital and very important to our, and to our development, to our growth, and to our protection and who we are as human beings. And that's what helps us navigate through life. In order for us to cross the street, we don't just run across the street. Some people do, but we don't just run across the street. We think about it. Our ego says, hey, wait, can you stop, slow down, look both ways? Because if we don't, we're going to get hit by a car. You know, there's, there's an order to things. There's an order to things. You know, so there's an order to things for us too. You know, and what are those things? Well, we're here to figure that out as, as we work through life and we navigate through life. Now, I never said life was going to be easy. And I never said life was going to be hard. But I've come to the conclusion that life doesn't have to be as hard as people make it sound, you know? And a lot of it has to do with the stories we build inside our spirit, our soul, right here. I was abused. I was trampled on. I was, you know, violated. I was blah, blah, blah. You add to that story. Because I'm just like every one of you. All that's happened to me too. Now, many of the perpetrators who have been in my life are no longer here. You know? And... I have a choice. Do I want to live in that residual, that that energy? The only reason sometimes we live there is because we don't want that to happen to us again. And we don't know how to move through our mind and the, and the thing seems real. But I'm here to say, 
we can move through that energy if we choose to. And choice is a big word because, you know, what do we benefit from releasing, letting go of that energy, releasing, letting go of that stuff that makes us the black sheep or the white sheep? What is it that you will benefit if you were to heal yourself, release yourself from all the things that hurt you, all the things that have had hurt you? What does that mean to you? What, how does that factor in a good quality of life? Are you, do you want to heal? So these are the questions that we have to ask ourselves constantly, every single day. But for some of us, it's not easy because it means we have to give up things that we've been holding on to that we identify ourselves as in that moment, just in that moment. So are you really the black sheep? Does it really matter to be the black sheep? Does it really matter to be the white sheep, to be the follower or to be the leader? Because even amongst black sheep, you have to follow a black sheep, somebody who portrays themselves as a white sheep or a black sheep. Even within the whites, sheeps, sheep, there are the sheep that you have to follow. It doesn't mean they're the black sheep. They're just the leading sheep. In the same way, even when you're in the group of black sheep, there's always one black sheep that dominates the group. So are you truly a black sheep? No, you are truly a human being. You're truly an instrument of creation. You're a splinter of the creation. You are the magic. <clears throat> what happens in your life? Do you choose to do that? Do you choose to be the magic? Do you choose to, you know, be what you th speak out to be? The thing is, what we say, we hear. If we down on ourselves, we hear that. We hear it. If we believe that we are good, we will push energies into the place where we are good. If you forget, believe that you're not good, that you're not worthy, we will push energies of unworthiness into our spirit and our soul. And we will teach people how to treat us according to that. If you ever wonder why people treat you a certain way, you should question how you speak to yourself. Ask yourself, what kind of words am I saying to myself that others are hearing or I'm, others are projecting onto me and I'm absorbing and allowing to take in? But it's pretty, pretty hard when we don't see it ourselves. So I'm just here to say, do your very best. Be in the now, because N-O-W, when you flip those words around, means we've won, W-O-N. When we win, when we've won, meaning that we've doing it, we're doing doing it in the now. Flip it back, we're back in the now, we're gonna win today. But these are choices that individuals, by individual cases, have to work on themselves. I could tell you all day to do better, but you have to want to do better. You have to want to move into that space and energy. What, it, what validates your spirit and your soul. Don't wait for other people to guide you. Don't wait for other people to show you. Just go and you will be shown the path. You know, sometimes we, we listen to our significant others and you know, sometimes that's not a good thing because they have a whole different outlook on life and how they see things. We have to trust that what they're saying and what they're sharing is vitally important to us. The reason we trust our significant others is because we're with them, because they are people that we have confidants with. But it's okay to not be in agreement with them and to say, hey, you know what? This isn't good for me. I'm not going to go this way. We're still together, but understand that I can't do this and I will not do this. When we speak our true voice, and we, when we have empowered ourselves to speak what we need to speak, life is better. Now, as humans, we like to project onto other people as well. So we have to be very careful how we project our, our thinking onto others. As I speak here today, you have a choice to take pieces and parts of what you think resonate with you. All truths are half truths. So what you hear for you is partly true and the other part is not. Not because I'm wrong, just because for you it's not right. Or for you it is right. And you know, and when if you agree 100%, that's fine. If you disagree with me 100%, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter <coughs> because it's more about where you are in your development. So I hope you were able to gain some insight, <coughs> excuse me, about what I was sharing today. 
about black sheep and white sheep. And if you need more information, just reach out to me, iggygarcia.com. Send me a message or DM me. And with that, that's it. It's good to be here. Matakwiasen. Be well. And have a powerful, powerful day. Oh, ho.